Hey guys, CB Super here. Today I'm going to show you something I've just kind of been playing around with. I've been making some space scenes and I'm going to show you how I made some of the elements for the space scene. I'm not going to go into everything and if you guys are interested I can make another video showing you some of the more complicated parts of it. But let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a new fusion composition. If you don't know how to make a fusion composition, I'm inside the edit panel right now. Just over here in the media pool, right click, come on down to new fusion composition. Go ahead and name your fusion composition, whatever you'd like to name it. Pick your frame rate and your duration. If you'd like it to be 10 seconds, right here is where you're probably gonna wanna change that. It's a little easier just to change it now. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and hit create. It's gonna give me a new fusion composition. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this fusion comp and drop it right on my timeline. Now I need my playhead hovered over my fusion comp and I'm gonna go ahead and jump over into fusion. First thing I'm gonna do, just because I like the way it looks, I'm gonna come up to options and I'm gonna uncheck show grid, just so my grid's not on. That's just because YouTube's compression doesn't really like that grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it off. So this is what you should have by default. It's just immediate out note. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my background off of the toolbar here and drop it right down right around here. And I'm just gonna plug in the output from the background into the input of the MIDI out. I like to use that as the farthest thing away from the camera that you'll see. It's the blackness of space. One of the next things we're gonna bring in is a star field. Now there are no pre-made star fields out there. Let's go ahead and make one of our own using a fast noise. And there's a ton of different ways you can make star fields, but the way that I like the best is to simply make it using a fast noise node. Fast noise node can be found right up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right onto the output of this background. It's gonna create another merge node here. And eventually I will take this fast noise and I will put it into a 3D card and integrate it into a 3D system so that I can have a little bit of movement and motion but for right now I just want to be able to see it and work on it so I'm gonna come over to this fast noise just give it a little click come over to the color tab and instead of two color I'm gonna click on it and I want to actually check radiant and then I'm just going to take this black point I'm just gonna move it to the right a little bit I might take this white point and bring it over a little bit as well just bring it inward before I go and play with any of the settings click on that black point again which is gonna be that little triangle there and take this alpha slider and slide it all the way down to zero that way everything that is black will actually be transparent and that's exactly what we're going to want. All right now click back over into the noise section and we can go ahead and give it a little bit of detail and we can go ahead and scale it up a bit. So over here where it says scale just go ahead and crank it all the way up. That 20 is not going to be enough so let's go ahead and just type in 100 manually and then now I can start to bring the brightness down. I can play with the contrast to get the brightness of the stars that I want. Maybe that's a little too many stars. It would show up pretty good on YouTube. Uh, the compression might take away some of these stars, but you will hopefully be able to see these stars pretty good. For this first set of stars, I actually want them to be uh, a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring back a little bit uh, using the contrast slider. And then I'm gonna take this brightness slider and just kind of play with it. And if you feel like that's not giving you what you need, you can always come back into the color and you can bring this white point in just a little bit and that will turn the brightness of the amount of stars that you already have on there up a little bit. Back over to the noise. If we wanted to make these twinkle, there's a ton of different ways we can do that. You could add a small amount of seed rate. I'm just gonna hold down command and control and just bump this seed rate up just ever so slightly. There we go. We kind of see they're, they're starting to twinkle. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Let me just bring it down just a little bit. Now those will twinkle just nicely. If you want to add a little bit of color to that, you can. There is a ton of different ways that we could add a little bit of color to that. In fact, I could even come up to this color right over here in the white point. I could go click on that white point. I could drop the green and the blue slider down a little bit. That's gonna give it a little bit of a red tint. And then when we add the next set in, we could even make it blue. Command and Control C to copy that and Command and Control V to paste it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the output and drop it into the next merge node here. You don't have to go in and change too much. Uh, I am gonna come over here and I'm just gonna change this color out because now I want it to be more of a blue. And I'm also gonna change the seethe. Not the seethe rate, I'm gonna leave the seethe rate where it's at. Um, I'm just gonna change the seethe a little bit just so it is a different pattern. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can see now we have blue stars. And of course you could do this a couple more times with yellow stars and you know, whatever. Really the sky or space rather is the limit when you guys are working on your own scenes. I am going to scale this up a bit because I want these stars to be a little bit smaller. I might even go a little higher, something like that, 200, so that those stars are just a little bit further in the distance. And now I'm just going to Command C, Command V, and I'm gonna do it one last time. 
this time I am just going to do something in the in the middle here and with this color I'm going to change it over to you know I'm actually going to go to like maybe a yellow so I can have some yellow stars in there and then again you're going to have to come over here and you're going to have to change the seed a little bit again and then uh, load this up and you can see we now have yellow stars now maybe that is too many stars um, let's come over here to where uh, the merge node is we're actually going to go into these merge nodes and we're just going to screen them all right, so these stars, these star fields are all on their own uh, layers, or I don't really like to call them layers, but they're you know on their own layers, so to speak. Um, and we will put them on 3D cards here in a minute. But first, there's one more thing that I wanna show you how to make, and that is a nebula, because you can't have stars without a nebula. Actually, that's probably not true. I really don't know how space works. I know that nebulas are these uh, gassy areas where stars are born. I don't claim to, to be a, I don't know, a space scientist or whatever you call those. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to make one of those nebulas really quickly. So to make a nebula, let's go ahead and bring in a fast noise. We're also gonna bring in a background node and behind the background node, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a paint node. So once you bring that paint node in, you're gonna take this fast noise and you're gonna drop the output of the fast noise onto the output of the paint node. It's gonna give you a merge. We're gonna take this merge and we're gonna drop this onto the output of the merge three there. So now we've kind of connected them all. There's still a few more things that we need to do. First thing is you'll notice that my playhead over here is on frame 80. I, when I start this, I absolutely do not want it on frame 80. I'd, I'd like it to be all the way back over to the beginning of my composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna drive it all the way back over to the left-hand side because once we start painting, wherever we start painting is where that paint is going to exist from. Um, we also have to go into the stroke duration of the paint node. So go ahead and click on that paint node where it says stroke duration. Go ahead and turn it up. 30 is not going to be enough. You see we have 239 or 240 frames because the zero frame is where it starts. So we have 240 frames. We need to cover at least 240 frames. So I'm going to go ahead and double click in here. And I'm just going to type in 300 because 300 is more than 240. You can put just 240, but I like to give myself a little leeway in case I do want to extend that animation a little bit. All right, there's a few more things that we need to do with this paint node before we can actually start painting. One of which is, let's go ahead and turn this opacity down just a bit, maybe like 0.3, somewhere around there. Make sure you're on the paint can, change it to a nice vibrant color. I'm gonna go with maybe a nice vibrant orange for now. And I'm gonna come up to the brush controls. I want a soft brush, I want it large. Um, if we look at the actual, I'm going to take this merge node and I'm going to load this into my viewer and I'm just going to hold down command and control and I'm just going to scroll out just a little bit just so I can see the entire frame there. And then I'm going to take this media out and I'm going to drive this into the right side over here. Again, just command and control, scroll out just a little bit so you can see everything. Back over here on the paint node, I want the size. You can see what the size is. It's probably not going to be big enough. So I'm going to actually double click in the size and I'm going to just type in 0.3. 0.3 is pretty good. And this softness, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. Now in this fast noise, I'm gonna want this fast noise to look a little bit more like clouds because when we're talking about nebulas, you know, they're gases and clouds, they're space clouds, space dust, if you will. Uh, nice breeding ground for stars. So what I wanna do is I wanna come into this fast noise and I'm gonna turn this detail up a little bit. You can see it's starting to look a little bit more like clouds, like smoke, like dust. I'm going to want to scale this up until, you know, basically until I'm happy. Now come over to the color side and we can leave it on two color. That's fine. Um, I just want to make sure that this alpha is turned all the way down though. Back over into the noise. You can play around with whether you want discontinuous and inverted selected. You can get a pretty cool like electrical feel here. And we'll play around with that a little bit later in the next video when we start going into uh, building the sun. But for now, we're just gonna leave it uh, with discontinuous and inverted checked off. You can also give it a little bit of seed rate if you'd like it to move. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do with fast noise. And I have a ton of videos on this specific node. It's one of my most favorite nodes and I use it all the time. But that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the paint node and we're actually going to paint a little bit. So when using the paint node and using this uh, this method, you're gonna need to come over into this merge node and you're gonna need to change the apply mode from normal over to color dodge. Yes, it goes black. If it doesn't go black, then you just need to come over to the merge node and hold down command or control T and that will swap the inputs. You don't wanna be able to see this, the clouds. You wanna be able to see it in black and it'll make a whole bunch of sense when we actually start painting. 
All right, so with the paint selected, you're gonna want to just use the mouse. You can use uh, a Wacom tablet if you really want to. We're not gonna get too crazy with it. You'll notice that when we just start dabbing here, we are creating a nebula. If you press it a couple times, you'll get like some uh, some more highlights and it gives it a really, uh, you know, kind of like neat, cool effect. You can also play around with adding stars and whatnot in here. And to add like a like a star into this nebula, it's pretty easy. You just click on the uh, image icon here. Over here under brushes, you're going to want to click on where it says ball metal. Just left click on there and you can scroll down here and you'll actually find some four, five, six, seven, eight sided stars. Just pick whatever one you like. And you can see what, what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to drop down this star. Maybe put it in here somewhere. Um, the nice thing is that uh, it, it gives it just like a kind of like a, a defined, you can see that star in there a little bit. One of the things that uh, I do like to do is I actually like to put this star on its own layer. And when you put it on its own layer, it, it really looks cool. Um, but for, for right now, I'm just, I'm actually just going to keep this color. And that way I can add a star and it's not going to look too crazy. Um, you can also go with like a completely different color. Let's go ahead and maybe make it a little bit bluer and maybe we'll take the opacity down and then size it down a bit. And then now you can put these in here and it's going to look kind of like, you know, there's, there's stars being born in there. Um, once we throw some kind of rays on this or, or even like a hot spot uh, node on this, uh, you'll definitely see it change quite a bit. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, merged in here. If we take a look at this uh, fast noise or, or the paint node by itself, what the paint is, is this is what the paint looks by itself. What it's doing is it's painting over this fast noise, obviously, and it's just using the merge apply mode of color dodge in order to effectively paint the color onto the fast noise, right? It's pretty cool, makes a pretty neat effect. So if we kind of superimpose this over everything, you'll notice that this is one of those that you're definitely gonna have to change the apply modes. You can come into the background, you can turn the alpha all the way down, and now you'll start to see the nebula actually in the scene, really starting to look cool. You can also come over into this merge and you can go ahead and screen it on, and now you're gonna see the brightness of all of the things that are behind it. Uh, one thing to take note of though is if uh, let's go into this this merge here and we'll see we actually have all of this uh, black clouds in the background. We didn't get rid of it. Now there is a way to get rid of those black clouds and the easiest way that I found is to simply just make a mask using the alpha or the luminance of this actual paint node, right? And I'll show you how to do that real quick. With nothing selected, nothing, you can just go ahead and off click using your left mouse button over on anywhere on the node panel. Shift spacebar will bring up the quick tool select. Go ahead and type in the word bit, press enter. It'll drop down a bitmap node. Now I'm gonna take the output of this paint node and I'm gonna just drop it onto the bitmap node. Make sure that it's in this yellow input right here, not in the blue input. All right, and then now let's go ahead and take a look at this. And by default, if we leave it on alpha, this is what you're gonna see. This isn't necessarily what we want. So right over here, go ahead and click on the bitmap and over off to the right in the inspector where it says channel, go ahead and left click and move it down to luminance. Luminance is going to give us a better representation of the actual image. And now what we need to do is uh, we, can, we can test it to see if, if, if it gives us exactly what we want. It probably won't right off the bat. One of the things that I like to do is I like to plug this bitmap node actually into the fast noise. So if I do this, it'll bring it in as sort of a, a mask, right? So now if we look at this fast noise, we don't, we don't really see much. Not very much of the smoke part is, is really, you know, the clouds isn't really showing up. So we kind of have to play with it a little bit and, and better define what actually we want to be in this mask. So if you take this bitmap and you drag and drop it over here on the left side, and then you just look at the final output over here on the right, you'll, you'll get it to a point where you are happy with it. So if you come over here to the high end or the white, the white point, and you start to bring it back, you'll see that it starts to get a lot more defined. And you'll notice that the mask itself is becoming a lot brighter. And so all of the black parts are going to still be transparent. All of the white parts are going to be opaque or visible. And so what we're doing is we're using this bitmap node in order to mask out this fast noise and make more of this fast noise visible but only the parts that we want to be visible. And so you got to keep an eye on this mask over here and really just kind of look at the output over here. If you bring it too far, you'll start to just bring back, you know, more than you probably want to go like almost all the way. And then I like to slowly bring it back until I get to a part where uh, I feel like this is the nebula that I, that I really want. Something like that looks pretty good. 
And you can also kind of take a look at here, make sure you don't have too much of this black. And if you feel like you have too much of the black, you can go ahead and dial it back down. It kind of working like an erode dilate node at this point. All right, so that's pretty much done over there. Um, there's a bunch of different things we can do uh, compositing wise. We can make these, um, these hot spots maybe a, a little hotter. You can do things like uh, over on the merge node, shift spacebar again, go ahead and type in hot for hot spots. Now you can take this hot spot and you can drop it on like, I don't know, maybe this star here. You can play with the primary strength. Maybe you want it just to be a little bit brighter over here by this star or that star. You can also, uh, if you don't like that, instead of a hot spot, you could use maybe like a raise. Now, um, now the problem with rays though is that it's gonna it's gonna start raying everything, right? So if you want maybe just this star over here, you could do this, and then uh, you could go ahead and just uh, grab an ellipse here and uh, do one of these numbers right here, and then just give that some soft edge, something like that. That'll get you a little bit of the effect. If you were to isolate any one of these stars and you put them on their own background, then of course you're going to get a much better effect because you can push that rays out as far as you need. This is just kind of like a workaround and it really only works as long as there's nothing else immediately right next to it. But I'll let you guys play with that if you guys like that. Um, uh, it's, it's a really easy thing to do. All right, so that's done. This is done for building the assets. Uh, the next thing we're going to do real quickly is we're going to put it on a 3D card system and we're just going to add a camera and some movement. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. If you already know how to do that, you can go ahead and skip the rest of the video. But if you don't, this is going to be a little bit interesting for you. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move these up a little bit and uh, kind of keep track of what they are and whatnot. In fact, I might even throw down some underlays so I can just kind of keep track of it. So I know that these three are all stars. So shift space, type in the word underlay or just under and then press enter. And I'm just going to move this around just a little bit here. And if you click off and then you hit and you hold down alter option and then you click on that, you can just move that somewhat independently of, uh, of the actual fast noises underneath it. And so that is going to be my stars. I might even come over here and I might set the color to, I don't know, something green, just change it up a little bit just so it's different. Now I know that this is my nebula. So maybe I want to make another underlay over here again, shift space. I don't have to press anything. Just hit enter. I can, uh, right click, come over here, maybe just make it pink. All right, cool. What I'm going to do next is bring in some 3D cards. So if we look over here on the right hand side of this toolbar, this is the little 3D section. I want to bring in a 3D card. I'll bring in a 3D merge node. I'll bring in a 3D camera and a 3D renderer. Now let's take a look at these real quick. So the image 3D, if we just look at the merge node by itself, uh, the image plane 3D is this card that we see here. Right. If I hold down alt or option and I just use my middle mouse button and I press and hold the middle mouse button, I can move and I can uh, orbit around my, my 3D scene here. And then if I hold down command or control and I use my mouse scroll wheel, I can actually scroll in and out of here. And I'm pretty much just using my middle mouse button by itself to just kind of pan around and just move these things over a little bit. And then I use my middle mouse button to grab things. So let's grab this camera. I'm going to go ahead and click on the camera. I'm just going to push this camera back in Z space. So Z space is just the forward backwards um, of one of the axes, right? And it's the one that we're going to be mostly animating in today. I'm also going to take a look at this image plane and I'm just going to push this image plane back a little bit. And now if we look at this render 3D, I'm just going to grab this render 3D and just push it over here on this left screen. We can see this image card here. And if I was to move this image forward and backwards, we can kind of see that it is moving, but it's only moving in relation to, you know, the camera and what the camera sees. Obviously, if I was to move it up, it would move it out of the camera and we don't want to do that. So command control Z to undo that. You kind of get the instance of what, what's going on. Now, everything that we build needs to plug into this 3D merge and it needs to be rendered out to this render 3D node. Now in this render 3D node, this node is what's actually going to connect to our scene. And so we can actually see this all together. So I'm just going to make a little bit more room on my node panel. I'm just holding down command and control and I'm just scrolling in and out to make a little bit more room. And I'm just going to disconnect each one of these star fields and I'm going to disconnect this nebula. And I'm going to place one of these image planes under each one of them. So I'm going to just bring in a, a couple more of these. So I'm just going to grab, use my left mouse button. I'm just going to grab it. I'm just going to drop it. Um, I don't necessarily want it to merge in. So I'm going to just go ahead and disconnect that. And I'm just going to take these image planes and I'm just going to drop them underneath. Now I'm going to take these fast noises and I'm going to drive them into each one of these image planes. And now we can go ahead and I'm just bring this merge node over here. So it's a little bit easier to see. 
and I'm just gonna plug each one of these into the Merge 3D node. But I'm actually gonna do them one at a time just to make it a little easier on myself. That way I only see what I need to see. So let's go ahead and let's take this Render 3D node and let's drive this into our composition. I'm just gonna drop it into this one that's right here. And I really can just delete these other three Merge nodes. I don't, I don't need them right now. Now, if we take a look at this media output here, we can actually see those red stars, right? Those red stars, we can see that they don't cover the entire screen though. And even if I was to come into this merge node and let's say I change it from canvas to wrap or I change it from wrap to duplicate or mirror or any of that, because it's working off of that 3D system, it's not gonna make a difference, okay? So just go ahead and leave that on canvas. And let's, we're gonna have to like move this actually in Z space. So that's where we're, we're gonna be getting all of the parallax and all the movement and whatnot. Let's go ahead and let's just take these red stars and let's push them way back in Z space. Now to the point where we probably can't even really see them very well. So maybe something like that. And now we need to go into transform, go ahead and click on it and we're gonna scale it up. So as we scale it up, we start to see that it is now covering the entire screen. You should be able to see that, at least I hope you can. I can see it on my screen. Even if we were just looking over here on this left panel, we can see those stars, at least I can see them. And then of course we can see them pretty well over here. And if you need to see them better, you can add things like soft glows, um, in fact, you could actually add a soft glow after these fast noises if you just want to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Um, and there you can kind of see them just a little bit easier. And of course you can blend that down if that's too much, but uh, I think it looks pretty good and it'll probably show up a little bit better on YouTube. What I'll do is I'll just add a soft glow under each of these and then um, we will obviously work on more compositing later. You know, it'll just get us going for, for right now. Cool, that's one. Let's go ahead and let's merge another one into this merge 3D node. And we'll notice that we see the stars now. It's starting to look maybe a little bit messy and we'll clean that up here in just a minute, but let's go ahead and push this one back. We don't want it to be in the exact same spot as those. We want there to be some parallaxing. So let's go ahead and put it, I don't know, maybe a third or, or maybe two thirds of the way back. And let's go into the transform and let's go ahead and scale that up now. And again, you just need to scale it up to where you can actually see that it is covering the entire screen. Um, we will be animating this camera. Uh, we'll do that here in just a minute. This third image plane with this third star fields, and now we can see that the, there's even those yellow stars now. These yellow stars are gonna be a little bit larger, and so they're gonna be also a little bit closer to us, maybe like one third of the way back. Now, let's go ahead and just make sure that this is big enough. We can kind of play around with it. Maybe, maybe the blue stars and the red stars we can see too well. Um, we can obviously dial those down. In fact, now that I look at this, I'm definitely gonna dial some of this uh, soft glow down. I think it's just way too bright. So let's go ahead and dial some of this back. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. In fact, I'm also going to come into the noise and I'm just gonna turn a little bit of this brightness down because I feel like I have just too many stars. But if you like that amount of stars, then by all means, um, you know, tailor it to how you want it and just kind of go from there. I think it looks a little bit better. And then of course, when we get the camera movement, it's gonna make a whole lot more sense. In fact, let's go ahead and move and animate that camera right now. So I'm not gonna move this camera too much. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the camera. I'm gonna come into the transform. You know, we're just gonna animate this Z space for right now. So let's go ahead and click on the keyframe for animation for that. And let's move to the very end of this uh, of this composition. And let's just push it in a little bit. We can see that the stars are, are, are moving a bit and that looks pretty good. And now if I push this all the way back and I press the space bar, you can see that it is animating. And the nice thing is that you're gonna get a parallax between each of the stars because they're all staggered at different locations, right? So as it moves through, it will you'll see it, it'll look like the stars are moving towards you, which is pretty cool and it's kind of what we're going for. But we're not done. We still have this nebula that we can play around with. So let's go ahead and add one more image card and we're gonna plug this rays into that image plane and then drop that into the Merge 3D. There we go, it looks pretty big and it is really big. And we're actually, we want it to be about this size, or at least that's what I want and that's what I'm going for. The only thing is if I was to press play now, it's really close. And so we get there really fast and actually we'll end up passing straight through it, which is cool. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. But for right now, let's go ahead and let's push this image plane back a bit in Z space. And then we're gonna go ahead and size it up. So let's go ahead and make it larger until it's about the size that I want it. So maybe something like that. And now when I press play, you'll see that it'll move towards it, but it won't move to, towards it so fast. There'll be some parallax between the stars and the, you know, the uh, everything behind it. 
And then there's one more thing that I'm just going to add for good measure. And that is, I think I want to add like maybe a, a cool uh, star of its own. So let's go ahead and let's bring in a, a background node and we can just leave it black for right now. Let's come over to the effects and we'll come over to templates. There's actually a ton of lens flares. We just click on this lens flares here and we go down here and we could pick any one of these lens flares. There's a ton of them out here. In fact, um, I think I'm going to use this, uh, I don't know, I'll just, I'll just pick this one right here. Now let's go ahead and take this background, drop it into the background, and then uh, take a look at it. This one, wow, that one's a little wild. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and we'll go with it. I'm going to turn off all of these auxiliary elements just because I don't think I'm going to be needing them for right now. And that way I just have this, uh, this star. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to turn this alpha down. And I'm also going to uh, use a blur on this. Uh, any of these blurs will probably work. I'm going to use a Gaussian blur right now, and I'm just going to uh, be able to see it. And let's turn the strength up, maybe something like that, something like that, so I can see it, but like it's not too overpowering. And I also want to maybe maneuver it so it's somewhere here in the center of the screen, and maybe let's just do it like at an angle, something like that looks pretty cool. All right, and the, you know what? We're going to do the same treatment. I could just throw this in there, but I'm just going to, I'm actually going to throw it into a 3D card. So let's throw it into its own 3D card and we'll go ahead and plug this into that Merge 3D node. It looks pretty cool. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe a little bit too close to us. So let's go ahead and in the transform here, we're going to go ahead and push it back. I can also just push it back in Z space using this, but that uh, the other direction, maybe something like that. Maybe I want to move it over. A little bit maybe on this side we can kind of scale it up a little bit like it's like it's over there and then here's the thing is um we're probably going to want it to be either behind or very close to um the nebula maybe maybe like right in front of it will work out well and then let's just kind of move it somewhere like that and then uh, we can size it down if it's too big like it's like it's maybe in the nebula and that way when we're moving towards it it will move at the same speed as the nebula now if i want it to move at a different speed i would either put it further back if i want it to move slower or i put it closer to me if i want it to move a little bit faster than the nebula like we were we were coming up on it now in the next video i'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh make this star and this um, particle effect over here this is just a a lens flare we did a bunch of nebulas here and i'll show you how to paint some of these uh pretty cool like abstract wispy clouds in the background i'll show you how to make a 2d planet and uh there's another 2d planet just using some kind of a texture a little sun there that we use uh using some particle effects all right i hope you guys got something out of this if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe hit that bell notification to be notified when the next video comes out which will be part two of this two-part series or three-part or however long it ends up being all right the cv super take it easy guys later